Good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, Seating Zoning Board of Appeals meeting uh, for Tuesday, October 22nd. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. And the first order of business is to approve the uh, minutes of our September 24th meeting. Uh, do we have any comments around the minutes? Can we do it without me voting on it because I wasn't here? Uh, you probably should abstain at a minimum. Right, but, but can we, we even do it? Did you read the minutes? I did. Did you watch the I hearing? I didn't. Oh. Uh, why don't we table the minutes till the next meeting? Okay. So the minutes are tabled. For the next meeting, I'm confident we will have a, a, a full, full attendance. <laughs> okay. Um, the second item on the agenda, the uh, request of uh, Timothy Ghosh, that has been uh, pulled from this, uh, this particular meeting. So uh, we'll begin with the, uh, the Ryan application and then finish up with the, uh, the joiner application. Okay. So with that, uh, the first order of new business is to hear the request of Clifford P. Ryan of 14 Fenway Road, map U44, lot 15, for a variance in the Shoreland Overland District to place a shed on his property. Um, uh, ben, could you just give us a brief overview on the application? Sure. Uh, Mr. Ryan came to me several months ago uh, in, in order to put an accessory structure on his property. He currently doesn't have an accessory structure on his property. Uh, I let him know the rules regarding the RP zone and the Shoreland overlay. And uh, the, the RP zone does allow an 80 square foot shed 100 feet from the RP1 zone, no more than 80 square feet on a shed. Uh, Mr. Ryan would like to have the shed 75 feet from that ver versus 100 feet. And let's see, because it is a variance in the Shoreland Performance Overlay District, we were required to notify the DEP. Uh, I did that 20 days in advance as required a representative of the DEP did call me and said, although he wasn't going to put anything in writing, he feels strongly that it does not meet hardship criteria. And, and a shoreland variance is hardship criteria versus practical difficulty, as you're aware. Okay. Great. Uh, Mr. Ryan. Yes, yes please. Up to the podium. Uh, good evening, and uh, thank you. And uh, before I start, I'd like to thank Ben for his patience and guidance through this process. I'm uh, new to this. I've learned more about uh, zoning ordinances and more about soil science than I ever thought I would. But uh, now I know. It's kind of interesting, actually. Um, <clears throat> as uh, as Ben mentioned, I'm looking for a relaxation in the 100-foot mark um, from the, the shoreland um, due to the uh, unique nature of the, the property that I have. I have taken uh, pains to sort of look around and see if there was someplace else that, would, uh, that the shed would go without being obstructive to neighbors or sort of sitting in the middle of the yard and all that. And it, it just doesn't appear to, to work out. If I can go through the, the various criteria, <clears throat> um, and, and I'll do deference to the uh, representative from the DEP, I do consider it a hardship and would argue so. Um, the uh, first criteria that, that I was asked to consider on this was whether the um, land in question could yield a reasonable return unless a variance was granted. Well, of course, this is a residence, not an agricultural concern. It's not a business of some type. But when we think of residences and yield, we look uh, sometimes to, to sale value. And I would argue that um, you know, putting a, a shed in an inappropriate place, an uncommon or untraditional spot in a yard, uh, thereby um, you know, overtaking the yard and rendering it uh, useless for many purposes, say, 
playing games out there. I may look a little long in the tooth, but I like to play Frisbee now and again. And uh, putting a party tent up or something like that. Um, the only place that's um, allowed by ordinance would really overtake that entire issue and, and usability would be diminished greatly. Um, <clears throat> so having, having said that, it's, it's not just a matter of trying to sell the house someday. I plan to live there for many, many years. I, I've been here about seven years uh, and I'm looking, uh, I'm engaged and we're going to move into my house uh, next year about this time. So we need a little bit more space, which is really what the uh, shed is about at this point. But um, looking forward to selling it someday, I wouldn't want to have to explain to somebody why there's a shed sitting in the middle of the backyard. Um, you know, they may just think that's an oddity and pass on it and move on. Um, <clears throat> so having, having all the setbacks and all the requirements that are there really limits uh, where it is that I'm able to do it. Um, the variance, of course, is, is uh, due to the unique circumstances of the property, not the general conditions of the neighborhood. Um, some of that, it's a long, narrow lot. You all have the plot plan on that. Um, it causes challenges to, to the placement of it, um, which moves into the next criteria, which is the um, uh, altering the essential character of the neighborhood. Um, there are other sheds in the neighborhood. These were all small houses, you know, 1,100 square foot house. Um, so people have outbuildings, people have uh, sheds, uh, and some people have stuff uh, sort of jammed up against their garage. Um, I would argue that uh, this is definitely in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. And I would argue further that um, putting a shed in the middle of one's yard or jamming it up against uh, another building or uh, you know, causing it to stick out like a sore thumb is, is going to diminish the value of the neighborhood and disrupt the character of the neighborhood. Um, and of course, the, the fourth item, the hardship is not a result of any action that I've taken. Uh, the property was um, put together in 1965, 1964, and uh, since then there have been many ordinance changes that have made uh, my house uh, a place that would be impossible to build on today as well as my neighbor across the street away from the pond, they would never be able to build today either. So what's happened is that from 1964 on, uh, everybody in the neighborhood has become subject to these uh, additional, more intrusive uh, rules and regulations. Um, if, um, if I may point out one of the, <clears throat> one of the uh, pieces in the packet, it looks, uh, it's quite a confusing looking drawing. This is actually the uh, septic system for my property. And it, uh, it sort of tells the story of the limited use of the, uh, of the lot to begin with, uh, given the fact that I had to devote so much of the backyard to the septic system. Um, that's a, uh, a big mound like everybody else sees. I was able to diminish it a little bit by backing it into the garage, so smooth it in as best I could. We've got a um, holding tank. I have, to, uh, I have a pump in there that has to be maintained, has to pump uphill. Uh, the, the septic has to pump up there. Um, and uh, approximately where the old pool was on the, the left-hand side of that, that's approximately, approximately the 100-foot line and from there back, the, the yard is unusable for shed purposes. So I have a very, very small space in front of my deck, in front of my uh, window in my basement, uh, on top of my um, septic tank or uh, holding tank. And that's sort of where you know, it would really be allowed at this point. Um, so what I'm looking to do is put it further out in the backyard, sort of up against the tree line at the end of the septic um, septic shoulder. Um, so trying to keep it on a flat spot away from the septic system, away from my tank. And um, that's sort of my reasoning for doing that. And as I said, I, I walked around uh, many, many times. Ben was uh, there a couple of times. We, we looked at a few options and it, it just doesn't appear that there's some place that would be um, sort of normal, traditional, maintain the character of the neighborhood and functional at the same time. So that's kind of what I'm up against. And um, I did talk about a couple of options with Ben. I've explored a couple of other options, such as building on the back of the garage and things like that. And it, it gets much more cost prohibitive. And again, I'm running into the septic system back there as well. So kind of locked into a, to an area that, um, 
that uh, you know that sort of makes sense, but but falls against the uh, the uh, codes here. <clears throat> And, um, you know, in looking at some of the pictures, I think you can see I take good care of my property. Um, last thing I want to do is make something stick out like a sore thumb and, and be an eyesore to my neighbors as well, block their view of Great Pond. Um, so I'm really trying to keep the neighborhood and my, my own backyard in much more of a traditional looking way. Um, it doesn't occur to me that, it, um, that a 25 foot variance would uh, cause any fundamental conflict with uh, the rules of, of what we're trying to do, which is keep stuff away from Great Pond. Um, there is a little hump back there. There's, there's plenty of land before it drops off into the, um, into the mushy area. So um, having had a, a soil scientist come out and take a look with me, um, you know, in his opinion, uh, there was plenty of land to create a buffer for a normal you know, household shed kind of thing. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have them. How big is your house? It's um, approximately uh, 25 by 40. It's about 1,100 square feet total. I apologize if this information was in there, but who is the soil scientist you used? Um, his name was, help me, Ben, please. Dale Brewer. Dale Brewer, yes, thank you. <laughs> Only met him once. Ben was uh, good enough to hook me up with him, and he was very helpful, helping me understand where we were. <clears throat> Did he prepare a, a report or anything of that nature for you? No, what I, what I still actually have out in my backyard is where we staked it off. He, um, he went out with me. We, we had to determine uh, where the soil changed from RP1 to RP2. Uh, again, I, I learned more about this than I thought I was going to, but it's kind of neat. Um, so he had to determine the difference between poorly drained soil and very poorly drained soil. So we went out uh, for about an hour, uh, tromped through the mud. Uh, he made a series of um, holes that he dug out, tested the soil, cataloged it, um, and then we put some flags out there and then taped it off. And as I said, I have three, uh, three flags out in the backyard, which are indicated on the, um, on the diagram just prior to the confusing one with the uh, septic system on it. So this line down at the bottom, 47, 51, 53, is, that's our, those are our flags. And uh, unless they were cut down by the mowing guys the last time, I think there's still one there. There's one on the fence, so that's not going anywhere. So we still have those, and um, so we, we determined that and were able to, to figure it out. But I did not get a formal report. Um, he said he could prepare one if he felt it was needed. Um, when we talked about the cost of it, um, it was going to be quite a bit of money compared to the value of the shed, and I said, well, we'll start here, so. What, what are the numbers 47, 51, and 53 designating the distance from your existing structure? Exactly, yeah. So we have the garage is, you know, 47 feet back from that, 51 and 53, those were our, and our marks. And you're saying where, those where that line is is where the 100-foot RP1 setback is? Exactly. And then it looks like the shed is... How far inside it's, of that? it's about 25 feet back from that. So the, the back of it would be about 25 feet back. You said some other people in the neighborhood have sheds? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Where are theirs? Um, neighbor uh, directly across the street from me has one. Um, that's not near the water. There's um, one that was, you know, likely grandfathered years ago. It looks a little aged. Um, two doors over from me uh, towards Fowler Road. Um, that one's fairly close. A um, couple of more doors down, there's um, a larger one um, that looks like it was probably built to observe the 100-foot uh, setback. And it is kind of in the middle of his yard. And that's one of the reasons I didn't want to, <laughs> to do it, as I saw his. <clears throat> so I'm sure he's got the 100-foot setback. Um, and I think that's it for, so there are two others on my side of the street. And then I think uh, there's definitely one across street from me directly and then another one, I think a couple more doors down. Uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> just following up on that. So uh, the two that are on your side are next door or two down? Uh, two doors down yeah. towards uh, Fowler Road. Yeah. And then I think two more beyond that. So there's a couple okay. more down there. <clears throat> and they, they are all in the, sh they are all in the uh, 
the RP1 CW? Right, right. The, um, the setback that we have is, is basically at the um, uh, RP1 uh, happens maybe 50 feet when you get into the, into the uh, whatever, I haven't learned all the soil scientists, but when, when you step off into the mushy area, into the, into the wetlands area, you get about 50 feet out there, 40, 50 feet. Um, the zone actually widens out so that the houses that are closer to Fenway Road, the, the pond kind of circles around, so they actually have a bigger setback. I mean, they have more space and, and they're easier to get it. But it's a 250 foot setback, which means it encompasses my house and the house across the street from me. Yeah. Okay. So it's pretty um, big. <clears throat> and you mentioned in your application that um, uh, you have uh, some, uh, the, neighbors are, uh, the neighbors are supportive of, of the, um, the shed. Do you have any? Uh, letters, or do you know if any of your neighbors are showing up this evening? To I don't believe they're showing up, and I'm no, I you know I had thought of that, and it might have helped. But uh, I've talked to both Pam, who is closer to uh, Fowler Road than me, and uh, we've spoken about it a couple of times. And Sandy is Sandy Brown on the other side is good. Uh, Pam is the only uh, neighbor that would really be uh, affected by a site view. So I I showed her where I wanted to put it back. If I moved it up into the yard then it would be obtrusive to her, then it would be. And this is your next door neighbor, I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, next door neighbor uh, towards Fowler Road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, and then just looking at the pictures that you provided, um, I'm looking at number one and uh, I, I, I note I guess your your uh, leach field on the far left, which is behind your, I guess that's, yes, well, it's the garage. Yes. Okay. And then it looks like behind the house or behind the deck, there's a second level. Right. And then where you're taking the picture seems to be a third level. Am I reading more into that picture? Um, <laughs> Three-dimensional or am I guess just, just Well, from, from where I take it, it starts sloping off into the backyard, so it kind of looks low. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, you know first floor and then uh, daylight basement, okay. but it, it's all once it gets off of that um, hump from the uh, leaching field, it's it's fairly flat there. Okay, and then the um, the pump station is on the far side of the yes of your lot on the other side. Yeah. Okay. And on the on the second picture down, you can you can. Topography-wise, you may be able to make out the raised level there. It's a little bit bare of uh, grass up on the top, and then it kind of circles around and to where that rail is on the side of the deck between that and the garage roof. That's where that circle begins, so it really takes up half of that backyard um, from that point all the way down. Um, and I, I guess note on picture two relative to four that you're you want to site the shed, it looks like, to the right of the bush and in front of the, 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 bir the birch tree there? Exactly. If um, you uh, move down a couple more pictures, I actually put a uh, little temporary folding structure out there to demonstrate where I'd want to put it. Um, with the setback from the, the side, uh, the lot side from Pam is, is fine. It's just moving it to as far back as I have to get to get it on level ground past the leaching field off that shoulder. So on picture one, the woman you're referring to as Pam is that house on the left with kind of the glassed in area on the back of the home? Yes. And yes. she's looking diagonally across your lot at the pond, which you can see in the top left corner of picture four. Exactly. So, so if, she'd be she'd be looking. If it's in the middle of your lot. She'd be looking at the side of your shed. Exactly. Yeah. Her her best uh, vantage point is from about where I'm standing, taking the picture in in uh, picture one. Is there space to put a shed? I'm looking at picture number one. Is there space to put it 
to the right of the house, not, with, not the side where the garage is, but the other side? The other side, you know, I, I looked at that and moving it in for the required setback. Sandy's house, which I, I don't think I, I didn't include the picture. Her house is closer to mine than Pam's is. And um, that doesn't really give you the required setback from the building itself, unless I put the shed right in front of that downstairs window. It would be at about that level. So that's... A so, so, yeah, and I guess following up on that, maybe this gets into the conversations you and Ben had around where else you could put the shed. Where, where else did you consider putting the shed? Well, I, I had considered it there. And uh, then I took the tape measure out and did a couple of measurements. And I said, whoops, here it is. And it's going to be blocking my view. And it wouldn't affect uh, Sandy at all because her house is sort of oriented the other way. But, yeah. you know, that would have been a possible spot except for the fact that it, it does, you know, block the view of that basement uh, area there. And it puts it um, uh, right near the uh, pump, uh, pump box. So I've got plumbing underneath it that I would need to consider as well. It looks like it would block any access for a pump truck too if you needed to get oh. one down there. Yeah, I would have to, you know, then, you know, maybe move it forward. I was thinking, um, I was trying to get it sort of as close to the uh, edge of the house as possible. And then the, the land starts sloping up. And then, as you said, you know, now I'm blocking the plumbing. and. Um, I thought that would have been an easy solution until I did some measurements, and that was disappointing. But mm -hmm. um, Ben, is that your opinion as well that it can't go to the? In looking at picture number one, it can't go to the right of that house, looking from the back, <clears throat> not the side of the garage, the other side. Yeah, it's so there. it's it's hard to say how, how much room there is over there. There's. We, we were focused more on this side of the lot. I, I didn't right. look in detail at that side of the lot. Yeah, and if, if, if you also if you look um, up in the top right-hand corner of that picture, you'll see some branches. Um, there's also a big oak tree right there. Um, that's picture, those, which picture? I'm sorry. Uh, picture one. So there's a, you can see some limbs coming up just in the corner over the house and there's a rather large uh, oak tree there that also would, uh, the, the ground slopes down there. Um, and you can kind of see the slope to the right at the base of the house. And then the tree, I, if I, I wish I'd taken a better picture of that side, but there's a tree there and the land slopes down. And as I said, if I bring it forward to the slope and then move it in for the offset, I'm kind of in the middle of the yard I'd, I'd need to go this side of the um, pump box, and then I'd be blocking the view from the basement. So kind of puts it back out in the middle of the yard again. On your plot plan, yep. is the number that is the setback on that side, is that an 18 or a 13? Uh, 18. Yep. But her, her garage is um, pretty close to, excuse me, pretty close to that side. Um, so I think it was like 25 feet or something would be where the structure would be. With respect to um, the criteria um, regarding whether or not, you know, you're required or you require a variance because otherwise your property cannot yield a reasonable return. Right. Um, can you explain a little bit more or just go into a little bit more detail why without a shed you cannot get a reasonable return on your property. Not not a shed in an okay. unwanted place, but just without a shed. Right. Well, I um, probably for the same reason that I'm experiencing it, other people may from a return standpoint, where it is a fairly small house and there's uh, limited storage uh, capacity. It's a normal size two car garage. So um, up until my fiance moves in, I can keep all my lawn furniture in there, but when she gets here, out it goes. So I don't think she's going to park outside. So for anybody going forward looking at a house like this, to have that accessory outbuilding, it takes an awful lot of heat off of, you know, trying to juggle stuff around in the garage or, you know, put a nail a tarp up to the side of the garage to put your lawn furniture under or something like that. I would, you know, much rather spend the money on a, a proper shed, properly store things, keep them out of the out of the weather, and um, so I think it's really that the, the 
the nature of the property itself and the desirability of a property like that going forward. I think a lot of people are downsizing. And I think, uh, you know, when I do ultimately move out, I'll sell it to some people that are also going to try to conserve space and energy and want to do that. Uh, and uh, you say it's a temporary tool shed. Uh, is, yes. this, is this like your classic uh, Home Depot um, Absolutely. shed that you're thinking of putting there? Yes. Yes. It's, um, I've, I've looked at a couple of different models and the uh, 8 by 10 that, that Home Depot has. That was my, actually my plan to do that. Um, put it on six blocks, six uh, concrete blocks, put a uh, gravel uh, bed under it for, for drainage and, and all that, lift it up just off the ground slightly and then leave it there. So. Any other questions for Mr. Ryan? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any anybody in the audience that would care to speak uh, about the application? Okay, I'll close the public comment section of the meeting. Uh, Turn it over to the board. Thoughts? I still have some concern about the, the lack of reasonable return without the shed. That, that's sort of still a concern of mine. I'm not saying it's dispositive one way or the other, but um, I mean, the house was purchased without a shed. I don't think every, we haven't heard that every house in the neighborhood has a shed. It's a small house, it has a two car garage. Um, there would seem to be, although inconvenient, there is space to store tools and uh, lawn mower, um, et cetera, in a two-car garage. So that, that's, that's just a concern that I have, given that it's um, you know, undue hardship and reasonable return. I agree. I'm struggling with this one. I am too. And I'll, it's let, I'll let someone else try to convince me otherwise, but I'm, I'm struggling with this one. And I just don't see it. I would, uh, I guess, uh, I share those concerns to some degree around the, the necessity of, of the shed. Um, I can probably get around that, but I uh, I would have liked. I guess I would have liked. I'd like to see uh, so maybe something a little more around the soil engineer's findings, just given its relative proximity to Great Pond, and um, and I would like to have seen uh, a little more in the application around um, uh, neighborhood support. Uh, you know, emails as we tend to get or letters that are with the application. Um, and probably uh, just uh, probably a, a little more around the sheds. Um, you know, who has sheds, who doesn't have sheds, although I was able to X them out on the, you know, on the floor plan. Um, uh, does anyone want to make a motion um, to, uh, Approve or deny the application. I'll make a motion to deny it. Do I have a second? I would second it. Any further discussion? Okay. Um, all in favor of uh, denying the uh, the uh, appeal and request for a variance? Any opposed? So the variance is denied four to zero. Uh, and I, I, I hope by our comments we gave you a little guidance in terms of um, things to consider, you know, uh, maybe talk to Ben, but things to consider around if you want to resubmit the application. Okay. Uh, so, uh, moving on, oh, wrong one. Finding of facts, if I can find them. There they are. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, so uh, the finding of facts, the variance request for map U44, lot 1514 Fenway Road, applicant is Clifford P. Ryan. Clifford P. Ryan is the owner of record uh, for 14 Fenway Road. 14 Fenway Road is a non-conforming lot in the RA district. The lot is also in the Resource Protection 1 Critical Wetlands District, the Shoreland Performance Overlay District, and the Great Pond Watershed Overlay District. The required setbacks in the RA zone for an 80 square foot shed are 25 foot front, 10 foot side, and 5 foot rear. The required setback in the Shoreland Performance Overlay District for an 80 square foot shed is 100 feet for an RP1 CW wetland and 250 feet from the normal water, high water line of Great Pond. The required setback in the Resource Protection Zone for a 80 square foot shed is 100 feet from the RP1 CW wetland. The application is compliant with the Great Pond Watershed Overlay District regulations. Uh, additional finding of facts. Um, I guess here we would say that the, the land in question, well, it's, it's inconclusive, it's, it's in, uh, it's inconclusive as to whether the land in question would yield a reasonable return unless the variance is, is granted. And I guess that's part of what we're saying here. Is it not? It's inconclusive that without the variance, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we can say that it... No, we can't say it as <laughs> stated because that would be... There's case law out there saying that if you can put a tent on your property and camp on it, that's a reasonable return. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disputing the reasonable return. I'm questioning whether... Just the language in the finding fact. Yeah, right. I, I think that, that given, given the vote, it's, I don't think that the... Well, could we just, state, the case could we just, could we just state in the affirmative, the land in question can yield a reasonable return without a granting of the variance. I mean, I think that's what we're finding. Yeah, okay, yeah, we can say that. Uh, the land in question can yield a reasonable return um, without a granting of the variance. Without a variance granted, yep. Uh, the need for a variance is due to the unique, cir unique circumstances of the property and not the general condition of the neighborhood. I th think we would... Do, do we need to get to these? I don't think, I don't think we need to grant, I, mean, the, the grant, I don't think we need to get to that one. The granting of the variance will not alter the essential, uh, I don't think we need to get to that one. And hardship, the hardship is not the result of action taken by the applicant, the owner. I don't think we need to go there. Um, I think that uh, I guess the con you know the conclusion is that that uh, the application uh, is is denied uh, uh, zero voting yes four voting no for the application right yes okay. so um, Mr. Ryan I um, sorry it didn't work out this time but again I hope some of our comments here are helpful, and uh, you know, we, uh, you know, well, thank you for, for coming in. Sorry it didn't work out, and hope we, maybe we'll see you again. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, next item is. To hear the request of Catherine Joyner representing James and Drew Rowen of 2 Kenyon Lane, map U05, lot 31, for an approval to expand the floor area of the house in a non-conforming area per section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, before we get started, I would just like to uh, make uh, the board aware that um, 
Mr. Roween is a member uh, of the Perpudic Club, as am I. Uh, we have, we play golf occasion, on occasions, more often than not, badly. Um, but, uh, I, well, I don't particularly view this as a conflict of interest. I do feel that, you know, I have to disclose it. I don't think it requires me to recuse myself. Don't know if any of you feel differently. Okay, so. I think from that perspective, we should proceed. And um, I guess, Ms. Joyner, would you like to care to come up? Actually, before you do that, Ben, if you just give us a quick overview of this application. Sure. Uh, Catherine Joyner came in with, an, with a building permit application to remodel and do some rebuilding of this house. and. Uh, some relatively modest expansions, uh, primarily for the purpose of uh, meeting the building code. The, the primary point of expansion was to get a code compliant set of stairs and get some uh, legal headroom on the second floor. Uh, it's a very tight lot. One, one of the walls of the house is very close, yeah, within a foot or so from the property line. Um, Overall, the, the main peak of the house raises, goes up one foot along with some dormering. And then uh, the smaller section of the house, that section goes up about four feet, but then does not exceed the peak of the main house. But because they are adding floor area and a non-conforming area, it requires a zoning board approval. Uh, the Okay, the floor area being the addition of the a new, a new, the new deck, or? Yeah, the, the area of the deck that is being enclosed is an area that they're clearly adding floor area yeah. based on the definition in okay. the zoning ordinance. Uh, there may be a couple other spots where you may be able to split hairs on whether there's floor area being added upstairs. I, I don't recall specifically, but the, my, my main concern to bring it here was, was that uh, 10 by 8 rectangle that will now be encompassed into the house. Yeah, got it. OK. OK, great. Ms. Joyner, would you carry? So the, the primary area of concern is, as Ben stated, the, the deck that we want to enclose in order to put in a, a better stairway. Um, the existing stair is fairly narrow and steep and it has a winder at the bottom. And I did bring some photos if you're interested in seeing some of the inside shots. Um, but that's the reason, the purpose for enclosing that, that deck and adding floor space. Other than that, the only um, floor space um, being added is in the sense of more usable space. The second floor footprint doesn't get larger, but right now it has a lot of sloped s roofs and uh, low headroom. And so um, by raising the roof a little bit, we have more usable space upstairs. But it's not increasing in the sense of footprint, other than in that where that deck is the 8 by 10 space, which you can see on your site plan if you have that in front of you. Go ahead, continue. I'm sorry. I'll let you finish and then we'll ask questions. Okay. Um, so if you want to look at the photos of the deck, there, I think it's a fourth page. One, two, three, four. There's an outside shot of the deck on the top photo. The bottom photo shows, I'm trying to get a close up of how the deck expands beyond the line of the house, and we're lining right up with the house. So the deck is actually a tiny bit bigger than what the frame line of the house will be when we enclose the deck. But it is right, right close to that property line, as you can see on, on the site plan that's part of the application. Now we're also, on, on the opposite side of the house, there's an existing deck that we're converting to a screen porch. I don't think there are any setback issues with that enclosure or with the new deck that's in the back corner of the house. 
the 12 by 12 that you see on your site plan. So again, the primary area for concern tonight was that small deck enclosure. Oh, I'm sorry, now I have to ask you, uh, sure. but the setbacks aren't changing. The setbacks aren't changing, no, there's, um, Setbacks aren't changing, no. Okay. That, so there's already deck on the front where we're enclosing and making it a screen porch, so that has not changed. And the garage that's shown in that picture that you can just see the lip of it here, yeah. the gray yep. garage. That's the, the neighbor's garage. That's the neighbor's. Right. Do you, is there anything more to your presentation, or are you ready for questions? Well, I, I don't think there needs to be any more, uh, you know, unless you have, you know, particular questions. But I think that the issue was that enclosure. So again, just trying to make that a safe stairway for the occupants. And this is to get code compliant. I'm sorry. This is to get code compliant. Yes, the stairs that are in the house now are old and they're narrow and. I think they've fallen down them once already, so. Yeah. Yeah. And nothing is expanding horizontally. There, there's already a deck where there's going to be enclosed living space. Um, so everything from, from the, uh, the building coverage perspective, there's no horizontal expansion of the building coverage. Except for that new deck, the 12 by 12 deck, which is uh, on the uh, oh, yeah. the little L, but that's in a space where it's covered with a brick patio outside anyway, so it's not changing any impervious surface. Yeah, and that is in a conforming location. Right. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, the coverage of buildings is increasing from 23 to 25. Actually, that was an error on my part. I didn't consider that patio, the brick patio that's already there. So we're not increasing the impervious surface at all. When I did the calculations, I didn't add in that patio. But that patio, uh, I do have a photo of it somewhere. Maybe the last page? Nope. What's that? Yeah, there's a big rock in the photo. Yeah, third page. You can see a little bulkhead in, in the top photo. That's that back corner where that new deck is going. And you can see on the ground, that's all brick patio there existing yeah. so actually on the on the application yeah, so, so you're building the deck over the pavers yes yeah the patio is bigger than the deck so we might remove them we might remove them just put the deck there in which case you'd actually have less impervious surface hi Craig Cooper for those of you who don't know me <laughs> Um, One more, to say it, start over again, Mr. Cooper. Okay, yeah, my name is Craig Cooper, and I've been working with Kathy and the Rowines. Um, and the, the question about the, the percentage of, of area was uh, because of the impervious surface ruling, I believe, as well. And we actually will probably, no, we will absolutely decrease that from both sides of the house when you realize that the small deck that we hope to enclose for a stairway the, what we will build there will be slightly smaller. We'll pull in that foot that is shown in your picture, mm -hmm. and that would decrease. That would make about eight. If that's ten feet, eight by ten. Tiny, it's a tiny bit. It's yeah. So there's a few square feet less of impervious surface there, and the patio in your picture is larger than the deck we're going to build there. So to put proper footings under that patio, I'm sure we will actually to, under that deck we would remove the patio, and in so doing. We'd, be, we'd have less impervious surface when we were done than what's there now. So, so now, the, now the trick question, mm -hmm. is the, so is the current 23% including the pavers or not including the pavers? It does not include pavers. No, it does not include the pavers neither, at all. Neither one of those included the pavers. That, that was my error in the application. So you worked with footprint of the house only until yeah. I actually had brought that up before we got here this evening of impervious surface. So. Okay, so if, if, if neither is including the pavers, and we are building a deck, we are building a deck which is increasing the footprint. The 20, the, the, the tw 
You don't, con you don't consider the, are we talking impervious surface here? Cool. Can, I, can I explain? Mm -hmm. Sure. A point. Uh, I, I think you did it correctly because mm -hmm. the pavers are not uh, coverage. building coverage. Okay. So I think you did the calculation correctly that it went 23% building coverage, 25% building coverage. Okay. The pavers are considered impervious surface but not building coverage. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So, 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 the, so the increase is effectively the deck? Yes. Okay. That's, that, was, exactly. that was the question. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. okay. So I guess I misunderstood that. So on the first picture, yes. will the new enclosed area be essentially that stairway turning into a straight run and that extra space coming out? No, it's going to be in a different location. Um, you have the... You have a PDF of the plans, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Let me give you, I also made copies of the existing plan that might help you see where it is now and where that deck is. So the stairway is in a different location in answer to your question. Does that, seeing that before and after, does that help? Because I have this on the larger. The reason for using that deck space was to find a place where we could get a code compliant stairway. The, where the existing stairway is now, not only is that space not wide enough it's too short to meet the run, so it's both rise and run, and then the winders, so we had to go outside of that part. The reason we're going outside the envelope of the building is to find a place that can fit a code compliant stairway. Is if you look at the before and after, in this area where the stairway will be relocated, there's also kind of an up and down situation there, and I think it shows on your plan. You come down a set of very steep winders, and then you have another trip pass down in the kitchen, which you have to climb up over, to get to this back stairway that comes in from the garage. The intention is to eliminate all of that trip hazards as well as the winders and create compliant stairs up through. Um, just turning back to the, um, the elevations for a moment. Mm -hmm. um, Is, is the is the is the are you going um, is the roof line increasing in certain places yes the main house the center portion of the building the highest point is increasing a little bit about a foot um, the initial intent was just to add dormers front and rear but by the time you do that they're going to end up with a much better um, result if we build a new roof if we you know, take away 90%, you might as well take away 100% and build it right. So that's what we've, de we've decided to do. Um, we're keeping the same, a similar look by insetting those steep roof lines right on the edges. So it's eff effectively a dormer si situation. So that's the main part. Um, over the garage space is not being changed. Right near Kenyon Lane, that little L on that side is not being changed. That's unchanged. On the far side, there's a very um, steep pitched L that's not functional on the second floor. So again, it's like we're adding dormers to it, but that roof is going up about four feet higher than it is right now, the, the actual peak of that roof. Still remains two and a half feet below the main roof, the higher peak. Okay. And um, I noticed in the application that there is no impact on 
neighbor views? I don't believe there is because that, that roof that's being raised four feet is already eight feet above the second floor to the peak of it. That's, it's a steep pitch roof. Yeah. So I didn't see any, any visibility issues with the people behind them. It's all, they're already, you know, eight feet above that second floor. Uh, and, and this this is on uh, this is uh, on uh, town sewer. I believe it is. Yeah. Yes. No septic. Okay. okay. Um, and I just I'm just curious. Um, why you think that this is a, again, kind of under our, um, under our ordinance, why this would be considered a uh, reconstruction as opposed to a relocation? Well, um, when I came to see Ben, that's what my understanding was of, based on the definitions of floor space and, and closing that deck. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Are there any um, comments from the many people sitting here tonight? Jeez, done. All right, thank you. Uh, we'll close the public comment. Wait, oh, oh. Okay, great. I shamed you into it. <laughs> no, no, only if it helps. If you just um, identify who you are and. Yes, I'm Lucille Holt Dottery, and I live at 11 Cottage Lane, which is directly across the street from Kenyon Lane. Yep. So I don't know if that helps, but if you walk up. Kenyon, we have a map. You walk up my driveway. Um, and. My biggest concern is the Rowenes are friends of ours, and they have been long-term friends of ours, and I am very concerned with the staircase that's within the house now as being safe and unsafe, and it is unsafe. Um, and that would be my biggest concern for them to have an improved staircase within their house for safety reasons. Um, so, um, that being said, it's a non-invasive, renovation and um, I'd like to see them get it through. You can see uh, their house from yours? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you know, you're not troubled at all by any, you know, the raising of roof lines or pitch, you know, decrease I of pitch? I believe that, that there's a, there's no view protection ordinance in Cape Elizabeth and there's no, um, I don't think they're going above the roof line. Well, just the, the height, yeah, it's min minimally, in right, it's minimally invasive. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. Mr. Cooper, this is a public comment? Public comment. Okay. You know, since the Rowlings came to me and asked me, I'll share with you that this has been their summer home for some time now. The intention is to retire here. And as we all are getting closer to our retirement, you know, it, it Stairs are one of the things that are of a concern, as well as for them to have potentially grandchildren visiting them, et cetera. So the intention was to look at how we could enlarge in a non-conforming situation what they have now. The area marked on your plan is an attic, the high, the roof in the back that we want to raise. It's finished in there right now. The term attic is used, but that's an open space, and I have no doubt that in the years as this was a cottage, it's been used for many things. And I think, as Ben mentioned, one of the intentions here is, is to safety for the stairs, but also we would be adding egress style size windows into these areas that would be bedrooms that do not have egress now, and we would be changing the code to meet uh, headroom requirements that it does not meet now as well. So there's three criteria there that we're improving with the egress, the headroom, as well as the stairs. I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Great. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Any other public comment? 
thank you for everyone's comments, and I'll close the public comment portion of the, the meeting. Uh, comments from the board. I guess my just one question for Ben: the, the nonconformity is the setback, not the floor area. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I guess uh, just reading through the definitions of um, re relocation versus reconstruction or placement, uh, it just within here where the relocation is speaking to the size of the lot, slope of the land, soil erosion, things of that nature. That's embedded in the application. I'm just, I guess, I guess. Well, I, they, they are reconstructing the house in a way. They're doing a partial reconstruction of the house. Mm -hmm. And so it, it falls under section three, which then directs us back up. Back up, okay. There. Okay. I mean, I think we've used Section 3 before for like a renovation. Well, usually we have a debate every time right. about which one it is. That's, that's right. why. So I just thought I'd try and we have Did to try and have a debate that? again. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Uh, okay. Um, any other comments? Do we don't want to make a motion uh, on the application? I'll move we approve the request to remodel and expand the single family dwelling at 2 Kenyon Lane. I'll second that. Any other comments around the motion? Okay. Uh, all in favor of the application as submitted? Any opposed? Okay, the variance is approved four to zero. What is it? What? Oh, what is it? Oh, application for relocation, sorry, is approved four to zero. My error. Um, okay, let's move to it. Yes. Okay, the finding of facts. Uh, this is a request to remodel and expand a single family dwelling per section 1943B3 of the zoning ordinance at map U05, lot 31, 2 Kenyon Lane applicant, Catherine Joyner. James and Drew Rowen are the owners of record of the property at map U05, lot 31, at 2 Kenyon Lane. Additional finding of facts, the Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, which is really NA, uh, and other on-site soils suitable for septic systems, the impact on views, the type of amount of vegetation to be removed to accomplish the relocation. That is a big run-on sentence. Two, the proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirements to the greatest practical extent. The Do you want to strike the whole septic system section? I th yes. Okay. So the location of the septic, se I just, yeah, get rid of it. Yep. Please. Uh, and the relocation, that, well, the finding of facts, should we take a, take a vote on the finding of facts? All in favor of the finding of facts? Any opposed? Four, zero. And the application is approved. Thank you very much. Uh, agenda. Uh, any other communications? I guess tomorrow night there is a, um, we're having a zoning workshop that um, I'm too late to beg out of apparently because it's a 72 hour notice, so I guess I'll be going. Um, so beyond that, um, we may have, this may be an all-time record. We are finishing up in 59 minutes for one of our meetings. Uh, so I wish everybody a good night. The meeting, what then? I was just going to say I'm leaving that workshop at 8.07 tomorrow night. Because, uh, <laughs> yes, and good luck, Red Sox, and thank you. Uh, meeting adjourned. I don't think you'll be the only one. Yeah, I'll be leaving at 7.30. <laughs> I might leave at 7.30.